engagement is often lost during transitions within a lesson. Many teachers did not notice the problems their transitions cause. By eliminating or adjusting transitions, teachers will maintain momentum and smoothness within their lesson and not interrupt student engagement. Today, we are going to show you several examples and non-examples of transition problems in the classroom. Okay class, today we're going to be going over chapter 3, so if you could go ahead and take out your notes. Okay, hold on a second guys, let me write down Courtney's name. I don't want to forget that she came in late. Okay, now where were we? Oh yeah, okay, everyone get your notes out and we'll start going over the lesson. A dangle is when a teacher leaves the topic hanging to address a separate topic or issue, then tries to come back to the previous topic. Transitions interrupt the learning that takes place because if the teacher specifically states they are moving from one topic to the next, students will disengage in order to prepare for the next topic. Teachers can cut down on transitions by interconnecting the topics and making each one relevant to the one previous and the one following. In this next scenario, the teacher correctly manages the flow of a classroom by not interrupting the learning that is taking place and addressing the issue at a later time. Good morning class. Today we're going to be going over chapter 3, so if you could go ahead and get your notes and your books out, and if you want to go ahead and just use your books to fill in your notes, what we're going to do is we're going to come back to together as a class in a little bit and we're going to go through it together. Oh yeah, class, don't forget, before you guys leave, you need to turn in your papers into this folder. Oh yeah. Okay, I think we're done. Yeah, I think so too. Okay. Nicole, um, where are we supposed to put our paper when we're done? You don't remember what I told you earlier? As the last scenario shows, the students are unsure of what directions to follow at the end of class. This is an example of a thrust situation. When a threat situation occurs, the teacher disrupts the students by providing additional information when they are involved in another activity. Because the students are so involved in their current activity, they pay no attention to the teacher, and the additional information seems irrelevant. Classroom interruptions are disruptive for both the teacher and students. So, in order to maintain momentum and smoothness, a teacher should always try to avoid threat situations. When the teacher provides the directions before the student begins working, the student's focus is on the teacher instead of the activity. In the next scene, the teacher gives the instructions before the students begin working with their groups, avoiding a threat situation and ensuring student comprehension. Okay class, today we're going to be discussing our reading in our lit circles, but before you guys get into your circles, I want to make sure that you know that you need to turn in your papers into this folder right here after you're done discussing them. Do you guys have any questions? No? Okay, go ahead and get into your circles then. Go ahead and get your books out today and get into your reading groups. Go ahead and open up to the chapter where we left off yesterday, please. And I would like one person from the group to summarize the chapter, another person to say what they thought was the most important, and I want the last person to tell me, tell their group the favorite part of the chapter. Oh wait, guys, stop. Hold on a second. I actually forgot. You guys need to turn in your journal entries today, so if you could go ahead and get those out and turn them in to me. Thank you. Okay, go ahead and get into your groups now. This scene is an example of a flip-flop. Similar to a dangle, the students were done with the first assignment for the day and had moved on to the next assignment when the teacher interrupted with something irrelevant to what they were doing. In a flip-flop, the irrelevant information involves a previous assignment or activity. When the teacher does this, the students are forced to switch their train of thought and begin thinking about this previous activity. As in this scene, if the teacher then expects the students to remember the instructions for the second activity, the students will probably be confused and not complete the assignment thoroughly. It can be difficult for students to keep up with the teacher shifting back and forth between activities. They may forget instructions, which can result in a low work involvement. 
In this scene, the teacher could have managed her flow a little better in a couple different ways. Ideally, a teacher won't ever forget to tell her students something. Keeping a detailed schedule of the day's activities is one way to make sure of this. However, this is not always possible, but there are better ways to recover from this than what we just saw. The teacher could have collected the journal entries the next day, or the next time the students wrote in the journals. Or, if the journal entries needed to be turned in right then, the teacher could regain the flow of the lesson by reiterating her instructions before beginning the students on the next assignment. This next scene is an example of how to regain flow after doing a flip-flop. Okay class, today we're going to go ahead and get our books and get into our reading groups for the day. Go ahead and open up to chapter 5 where we left off yesterday. And I would like one person in your guys' group to tell me, to tell your group actually, what is the most important thing they thought from a chapter. One person to summarize a chapter. And I want the last person to say what their favorite thing was. Oh wait, guys, before you start, can you go ahead and turn in your journal, journal entries? I actually forgot to ask you for that. Thank you. Okay, go ahead and get back into your groups. Thumbs up if you're with your group. Thumbs up if you have your book open. Awesome. Okay, would someone like to raise their hand and tell me what they have to do for this project? Courtney? I'm supposed to tell my the most important part of the chapter. Okay. Would someone else like to tell me what they think they need to do? Nicole? Tell my favorite part of the chapter. Okay, and Garrett? I'm supposed to summarize the chapter. Awesome. Do you guys have any more questions? None? Okay, go ahead and get started. Go ahead and get out your notebooks and copy on these problems and start solving them by yourselves. Oh, Mr. Smith, hi. I'll be with you in just a moment. We're going to work on this lesson for a little bit. There will be many times in which a teacher's classroom may be interrupted. Therefore, a teacher should strive to never be the cause of these interruptions. It will happen enough without their help. With the stimulus bound problem, a teacher draws their students' attention away from their lesson to something that does not pertain to it, like we saw in the last scenario. An effective teacher shows several behaviors which are responsible for student learning. Two of these are withitness and flexibility. Withitness involves being aware of what is going on in the classroom and monitoring classroom activities. Flexibility involves being willing and able to adapt classroom activities as necessary. In the next scenario, we will see how a teacher can help maintain smooth transitions in her classroom when she sees what is happening and adapts correctly to the situation. Okay class, if you could go ahead and get out your notebooks and start writing down these problems and then start to work on them individually. And I'm going to walk around while you guys work on them. If you have any questions, go ahead and just raise your hand and I'll help you. As these scenes showed, teachers have to expect and be able to adapt to unexpected situations. By avoiding or managing situations such as dangle, flip-flop, thrust, and stimulus bound, a teacher can effectively maintain momentum and smoothness in their lessons. It has been said that teaching is more than just a science. It also involves artistry, the use of judgment, intuition, and insight. By combining the science of organization with the art of flexibility, Teachers will be able to maintain effective classroom management.